Hey everyone and welcome back. This is the Happy Cat here and lately I've been really interested in computational photography and I've been thinking about how I could make procedurally generated enemies and environments and graphics for games and so of course I wanted to make a video about how we could go about implementing some of this stuff I've been reading about in these really cool cutting-edge research papers that have been coming out in the past few years. But then I was checking my analytics and I noticed that I'm really missing out on that profitable youth demographic. So I thought, hey, let's back up from these neural networks. Let's back up from those image fusion algorithms. And let's just start with the basic ideas behind making randomly generated graphics. So if you're a senior software engineer too, or if you like have the credentials to be my manager, which honestly could be a solid 35% of you, you are not the target audience for this video. This will seem like your child giving you a tutorial on finger painting because this is the kids table where the code is slow and we do what we want, dad. Uh, yeah, so this video is just going to cover the basics of image manipulation and how we can do things to sprites with code and the science and algorithms behind actually procedurally generated graphics will be for a different video. All right, hopefully my messy code will impress the youth, especially those pesky Dutch teens, but let's get right to it. All right, let's start with the sprite sheet of Mega Man. Now, I'm sure most of you are familiar with sprite sheets. It's just where we have all of our animations for a character on one sheet. So you'll notice here's his slide, but then here's his jump and then a run cycle, all of his animations. Now let's say we want to change his color and have it apply to all possible animations. But you'll notice there are many different shades of blue. So if we want to change the color of his suit, we can't just say make the suit red at these coordinates or anything like that. We have to pay attention to there's this dark teal and then a normal teal and then a dark blue, a medium blue and a light blue. So there's five colors that we need to take care of to change its appearance. So let's look at the code to do that. So let's look at how we could change Mega Man's color while still maintaining all of the shading first in RGB and then in HSV. And I'll explain everything at a high level, but if you want to look at the individual bits of code, this will all be on GitHub. Feel free to play around with the code however you wish. And this is in Python 3 using the pillow imaging library, uh, which is a really nice tool to play around with. So first, if you see any of these library calls, it's probably a pillow call. So first, we are going to have our nice fluffy pillow open this image of our sprite sheet. And then we're going to convert this image to a 2D list of RGB values. So we're just going to take every single one of these pixels. You'll see it's a 728 by 282. So we're, we're going to have a lot of pixels in the tens of thousands, which is why this can run pretty slow. Um, and then we're going to convert that into a 2D list so that we can just iterate over them. Next, I manually extracted the colors that we need. So if you remember the dark blue, medium blue, light blue, dark teal, and teal. So you can do this in even MS Paint just using the eyedropper tool and then taking a look at whatever the RGB values were. And then we're going to put this into our palette is what we're going to call it. And then we have this function called change color skin. So we put in our list of values, we put in our palette, and then we adjust how much red, green, and blue we want. In this case, we're turning up the red by 200 and we're turning down the green and blue. So we're hoping to get a more red looking Mega Man. And then we're just going to write this to an image file. So this is what this looks like. And you can see the shading for the most part is maintained. It's a red Mega Man, but it is kind of hard to think in terms of RGB. Uh, our brains don't really think of how much red, green, and blue. We tend to think of colors and then whether something's lighter or darker. So that's why I'll show you guys how this all works in HSV. We'll go through the code for the HSV because I think it's a little bit more intuitive. Now HSV is hue saturation value. Now, so hue is where a color is on the color wheel. So it's marked in degrees. That means is it a red, a green, a blue, 
orange, yellow, purple, and then the saturation and value will determine how kind of light and dark it is pretty much. So you'll see in this HSV Mega Man, we're making it go on the other side of the color wheel. So this is a, with the original Mega Man image so that's blue. So the complementary color of blue is orange. And then we're going to turn up the value a little bit. So let's take a look at what that makes. Yeah, so it's like an orange guy, which is kind of what we would predict. So most of this is happening in a function called change color skin. So we're passing in our values, which is the 2D list of RGB or HSV values that we converted from the image. So we're iterating over every single pixel, and then we're going to change those pixels and then send them back into an image format. We pass in our palette of colors that we want to target, and then the change in red, green, and blue, or the hue saturation value, and then the mode of whether it's RGB or HSV. So all right, first we're going to make a deep copy of this list of values because we want our totally new separate copy to be completely unchanged. We don't want to just make a reference to it because then that would change our original. So we're going to iterate over each pixel in this list. And if the mode is HSV, uh, we need to make sure that we're comparing floating point numbers properly. So I made this round color function that you can take a look at later. Basically, HSV, when you're using uh, a hue in degrees, and then saturation and value are percentages. So when you're dealing with floating point arithmetic, you can't just set them equal to each other like an int, because sometimes you get crazy things like 96% ends up translating to 96.01%, which is not equal to 96%. Weird machine stuff, we'll cover it later. Uh, otherwise, if it's not HSV, we can just safely compare integers together. And then we have this function checking if the, co the current pixel color if x which is the current pixel that we're iterating over we're checking if that's in our palette so is this a color we want to target is this one of the blues or teals if so adjust it based on the parameters we set up it's red it's green it's blue whatever we put in there otherwise if it's not a color we're targeting like if it's the white background if it's his face or something like that we're just going to set it back to its original value and then we return these new values and you'll see down here, once we do that, uh, we just write it back to an image and we set the image name. And this is all with library functions. So then we get this red Mega Man and we get this blue Mega Man and it's great. All right, so if you followed that, then you kind of maybe get how to manipulate images with Python. So let's do something a little bit cooler. Let's make some randomly generated enemies. So today we're going to make a bunch of different Goombas. So here I have this base of a Goomba. There's no face, no details. It's just we're going to use three colors today. We have this bright red, a lighter color, and a darker color. Now these aren't the final values. These are just setting uh, the contrasting elements. So there's three pieces, the head, the body, and the feet. That's all we're looking at. And then I made a couple of faces uh, that are all exactly the same dimension. And so we have the classic Goomba face here, but then I made some other eyes. And you'll notice when I do have some kind of a eye color, it's the exact same color as this sub color so that they go together and that the shading uh, increments correctly, I guess. So how could we make some randomly generated Goombas? Well, we know how to change the color, so we can do that. And then let's just randomly select some faces. And this would be the same if you wanted to make more complicated enemies, you would just decide uh, certain features like color and maybe a gradient of color. Maybe if it's a wolf, you don't want to make it too crazy. You might have some shades of gray you go between. And then you just pick some features and randomly select those. So that's how you can make randomly generated enemy graphics. Uh, once again, not procedurally generated, this is just random generation. So one word of caution is that 
This code will not necessarily apply to every enemy type. Some of it is a little bit hard coded for the Goombas. I did my best to make it extendable, but uh, eventually there's only so much that you can do when you're working on a really specific creature and you're not making a whole engine or something like that. So you'll notice that there's a ton of parameters passed in here. Uh, we have the number of Goombas we want to create for a given sprite sheet. We want uh, an image full of faces, the one I showed you, the base image. We'll have the name of our output file, and then the number of possible faces. So in our case, we have eight faces. The padding on the faces and the bases. So you'll notice um, I set exactly one pixel of padding. So you'll see if this one square is one pixel, we have one pixel padding here, one pixel padding here, one here, one here. So we need to take that into account when we're processing the images or everything will be off by one. And then we're going to set the coordinate where the face starts. So if we go to the base, I believe the face starts somewhere around here and then it's going to be like that. So we need to set that coordinate and then whoops, we're going to enter our color palette and then the number of Goombas we want per row on the sprite sheet in case that's a concern because we don't want to necessarily have like a 40 by one sheet and then our sprite width and our sprite height of the base. These are all the reason why there are so many parameters is so that in case I did want to change around the base and the faces and things like that, I could just enter them in and I wouldn't have to change my code too much. So all this does is we set the number and it creates, let's say we set it as 20, it'll create a list of 20 2D pixel lists. So you could say this is a three dimensional list, uh, similar to the sprite sheets we made before. So we have 20 different little sprite sheets and then we have a function which you can look at later that will format it to make them go into the rows and columns of a sprite sheet. And so they're not in separate files. Okay, so to actually make the Goombas, first we're going to have our code get a random face. So we have our face sheet, we have it pick a random number, and let's say it picks this one. I believe they're all like 10 by 7 or 8 by 7, something like that. And we're going to have it extract just these pixels and put them in a 2D list. Then once we get that random face, we're going to go down here and write those face pixels over the base images pixels starting at the face start coordinate that we specify. So this looks a little bit confusing and gross because it is a little bit, <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, but we're going to be iterating from the coordinate where the face is supposed to start and we're gonna go through the width of the image. Similarly, the coordinate where it starts in the Y direction and go through the height of the image. Now here, this is just ignoring because sometimes you'll have it ignore um, transparency. Sometimes that gets weird and the transparency is still considered white. So this is just a check because I was having issues uh, making sure that uh, if the pixel in the face is not white, then we're going to write to it. Otherwise, we get this white block on its face. And yes, if I was a nice professional, this wouldn't be 255, 255, 255. I would write my whole like color library or I'd import things. Like I said, this is the kids table. This is what's happening today. Uh, so yeah, we're just going to, this is a little bit embarrassingly hard coded. We're just writing the face to each of the Goombas because there's two frames here. This is a little like silly walk cycle. So we're just writing it here and then we're writing the face here. All right, so what we have right now is one face on top of the red Goomba. So now we're going to convert to HSV because I made this whole thing in HSV because it's a lot, uh, I think, easier to work with. Right here is where we're really changing the colors. We're selecting a hue at random. And if you remember, the hue is the color like family, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, and it scales with the number of faces. And why I chose to do this kind of scaling has literally no method to it other than I pressed refresh a lot and played around with it. And this got color palettes that I liked. If I was an ideal, perfect professional person, I would have parameters. You could enter in your randomness seed or you could literally just type in do my job for me and it would do that but um, that's not what we're working with today, kids table. And then 
These right now are kind of moot because sometimes if you let it go too crazy with the saturation value, if you pick a totally random one, the colors can look either too muddy or too washed out if you just let it go crazy with the randomness. And so then this is the same thing as above with Mega Man. We literally are just calling the exact same function to change the color skin based on our randomly selected hues. And then we're gonna convert that back to RGB and then just write that to an image, write it to a sprite sheet, format it, bada bing, bada boom. And this is what we come up with. We get a bunch of these guys. And so the randomness isn't perfect. I don't know what Python's randomness functions are, but you could see that maybe uh, if you generated a bunch of these, every time you loaded a new level, maybe you could have a bunch of different little enemies. And I like the really bright colors too. I hope this was helpful as a basic tutorial on image manipulation. And if you're a Thurston for having some external motivation to work on this stuff, like making computer generated art or making games based on colors and graphics, then check out the description in the link below. Wait, what? Uh, check out the subreddit r slash the happy makers. We are going to have a new monthly challenge for this June based on this concept. So if you'd like a non-competitive fun way to practice, then check out the link below. Also, feel free to check out my second channel, The Happy Er Cat, where I post streams, the challenge results videos, and recently I've been vlogging over pixelated vegetables. So if any of that interests you, go check that out. But most importantly, have a happy day where you are, especially if you're a Dutch teen. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.